Hey, this is Jill Simonello with Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk, and today I am looking at the Lincoln Navigator. And um, as you can see, it does fit in my small city garage. Now, what I wanna do in this review is I'm gonna throw it to Tim Esterdahl in Nebraska a couple times, and he's gonna talk about the Ford Expedition. And we wanna see if this vehicle right here is worth the $25,000 premium that Lincoln charges over is it essentially the same model? Did she say 25,000? Yeah, there's a problem with that. We made a slight error in this video and I need to explain what's going on here. So when Jill had the Lincoln Navigator, she was doing it online, Navigator, Black Label versus Ford Expedition with the top trim platinum. And so the difference there was $25,000. However, she filmed her portion, then I went to the dealership and looked for a similar expedition and I was only able to find an XLT. Then we started doing some more research on the back end with video editing and it turned out to be a $50,000 difference. 50 smackers, 50,000 smackers, yeah. So uh, the difference is even more stark. So I thought, you know what, we still need to run this video because it is quite interesting to see how much $50,000 changes the vehicles. Let's go and get back to this comparison. That's what we're gonna look at today. So let's take a closer look, right? now all right thanks jill it's tim here in nebraska yeah the countryside i have a ford expedition i have my friends fremont motor company this fremont ford here in scotts bluff they had one on deal a lot and i thought you know what let me go grab one now the first thing i want to do is look at the engine because this has a 3.5 liter v6 engine but is it the same as the expedition Okay, so the very first thing I'm gonna point out is how you push this hood up. I've already released the uh, button on the inside of the cabin, and then there's just this little latch right here, so you don't have to stick your hand in to like reach for something and swipe. It's just this little latch right here, and then you push it up. That's very easy and very appreciated for somebody like me who is on the short side of the spectrum. Okay, so 3.5 liter V6 engine, this, is twin turbocharged. So does the Ford Expedition have that? We'll go to Tim in a second and find out. But this is twin turbo and it has 440 horsepower and 510 pound feet of torque. It's same across all of the trims. And I can tell you from driving in the city, driving on the highway, doing some passing maneuvers, this is really nice power for a vehicle of this size. So now I'm gonna send it back to Tim and he's gonna tell you about the engine and the Ford. Expedition. Okay, let's go ahead and pop the hood and see what I have underneath the display. There we go. Easy access, easy opens. All right, so here we go. The same 3.5 liter V6 is found in the Lincoln. It's got the same, like I said, power plant, same everything. The only difference here is going to be in the horsepower and torque of this engine. So the XL, this is the weird part. The XLT and Limited models have a 375 horsepower version of the V6. The top tier Platinum is 400 horsepower. So it does vary on how much horsepower you get with different versions. And you know why I think that is? Because if you look at the owner's manual for the Lincoln and the spec sheet, and you look at the owner's manual for Ford Expedition, which I did earlier today, you will see that both of them recommend premium fuel to hit those higher horsepower and torque numbers. And I would imagine that the higher trim vehicles are tweaked a little bit differently to handle a premium fuel that much differently. So it's not anything different than the engines, just a little bit different tuning with the turbos and the, whether or not you use premium fuel or not. So if you look at the horsepower and torque numbers that Jill gave you, on the bottom of the asterisk on that sheet she looked at, there's an asterisk that says that's based on 93 premium fuel to get those numbers. And so I think that's your variance. And if you use 87 instead of 93 premium, you'll see less horsepower, less torque, which will give you more of the numbers you get in different versions of the Ford Expedition. Well, I'm gonna spend the bulk of this review talking about the interior of both the Lincoln Navigator and the Ford Expedition. I did wanna spend just a little bit of time looking at the exterior because I think the Lincoln Navigator has a really impressive facade and it begins really with these 22 inch wheels that you see on the black label model. I think all of the wheels have a really specialized and detailed pattern and so from the base trim all the way up to the black label you're going to see some really nice wheels. Now the other thing that I think is impressive and imposing is going to be this grill right here. I love how the Lincoln emblem kind of pops out from the grill, and I love all of these individual silver pieces that make up a mesh look on the grill. 
Now, something else that I really like about the Lincoln Navigator that you can't see during the day, so we're gonna pop some B-roll in here, is the welcome signature. So when you unlock the doors, you can see the lights kind of move away from the grill around the edges of the headlight, and it's just a nice little way to say, hello. And then when you lock the doors, they do kind of a reverse motion and go back towards the grill. And they're just saying, yeah, have a nice day. <sighs> Something else I really like that you can't see during the day is going to be the puddle lamp that appears on the side of the vehicle as you approach it. It's basically just a nice little carpet of welcome that says, hi, here's where you get in your car. And it's just a little Lincoln emblem and it's a Lincoln welcome mat. Something else I really like about this vehicle, and yeah, we'll see if the Ford Expedition has it. Power running boards. So you open the door and these power running boards just kind of pop out and gives you a nice little way to just step right into the vehicle. And as somebody on the petite side of things, I am definitely going to appreciate that. Okay, let's take a look at the exterior here of the Ford Expedition. It's just a silver color on the outside here. I don't have all the fancy trim work that she does. I don't have the fancier grill. I don't have some of those luxury touches that she does in that vehicle. Come around the sides, and again, XL version, long version. I do have running boards. They're not deployable though, so that's the difference you get. You get the deployable running boards that she had, the power running boards, which you can get in higher trim levels. This is an XLT, so it's not the highest trim level expedition, but just something to keep in mind that those are the little features. The fog lamps come down, which you can see I do have some right here, and but it's daytime, so I don't know what they're coming down to. I have some lights here. No, this is actually, this is a camera, so this is a side view camera. I don't see, that should be a puddle lamp right there coming down, but again, daytime. Um, anyways, so XLT, not the same trim she's got, but you know, there's your differences in cost. And coming around the side, we see the max, we see how big this thing is. But let's go ahead and get inside because she makes a big discussion about some of the seats. And it's gonna be like 102 degrees today, so let's just get inside. This is where I think the Navigator wins over the Expedition. And so let's let's just start with the seats. And the front seats in this vehicle have what they call perfect position seats. And that means they have 30 different adjustments. So you have your seat adjustments here on the door in terms of whether or not you wanna like move it forward or backwards, or you can adjust some of the lumbar positions and you know some of the, the headrest things, and you can ah, actually push the headrest up, you can push it down, you can um, push it out. So there's just some different adjustments here, but that is not what is special about these seats. Nope, if you hit this button, which is at, like kind of the outer button here on the door and it has like a little bump on it, you get this screen right here. And these are multi-contour seats and you can adjust it to fit your body exactly. And I'm gonna say I can adjust it to fit my body exactly and that is hard to do because I'm thin. So you have adjustments for these bolsters here and so you can like take them out and this will expand. But me, because I'm thin and I actually wanna feel the bolsters, I have them all the way pushed in and they actually hug my rib cage. I can't say that I've ever had that happen in any vehicle that I've ever driven ever, ever, ever. These touch my rib cages and I really like it. So I did the same thing for the butt bolster. I don't know what you call those, the, the thigh bolsters. Um, and you can, again, you can take them all the way down and it flattens out the seat. But for me, again, because I'm small, I wanted to really kind of get my, um, the bolsters kind of hugging me. Because she talks about some lumbar stuff. It's kind of weird. But, you know, then I love the fact that you can adjust your different lumbar areas. So you've got your upper back that you can pop in or out, your middle back you can pop in or out, or your lower back you can pop in or out. And so you can just adjust every single section of the seat to fit you as a person perfectly. I love everything about how adjustable these seats are. And then the piece de la resistance, I forgot to mention it. How could I forget to mention this? massaging seats <laughs> with a couple of different patterns you can choose and yeah everything about this is just pretty awesome all right thanks jill and um no i don't have a butt bolster 
I'm not even sure that's the right word for it. I think thigh, thigh bolster is probably better. I don't have any of the bolster stuff. I don't have any, I have the memory seat button there, but I have no adjustments like you had on yours. And I don't have any, like I said, uh, seats. The seats are still pretty comfortable, but I don't have all those adjustments. I have a forward back, I have rear back. I don't have anything for the, you had the extra on this part with the headrest. I don't have that. Um, yeah, just a lot of features there. I just don't have. But wait, there's more. It gets even better because available in the back seat, there's a lot of good seat comfort and adjustment as well. So let's take a quick look at that. Now that we are in the back seat, I just want to point out how much legroom you have here. You have probably about six to eight inches between at least my knees in the back of the seat. And this right here is not super hard, though it's moderately hard, which means yeah, if you're a little bit taller and your knees are brushing up against this, you'll just be moderately uncomfortable, not super uncomfortable. Uh, but the real thing that I want to talk about are the seats back here, because look at this. You have a lot of controls just for these seats right here. They're not exact repl replicas of the front seat, but you do have a lot of adjustability. So they're not the perfect position 30 way adjustable, but you do have heated and cooled options as well as the fact that you can do some seat massaging as well as adjusting the lumbar support for these seats and that's really cool frankly i haven't seen this in another vehicle like ever um, so from the adjustability to the fact that you can adjust your own climate back here as well uh, to the um, just <laughs> massaging seats yeah these middle seats win. All right, Tim, I'm going to send it back to you. Does your Ford Expedition have rear massaging seats? And in general, what's the seat comfort like? In the meantime, I'm just gonna take a little nap. And as far as the second row, I know you mentioned that as well as having all the seats back there, plus that, that little screen, which looked pretty cool. Let's go check it out. Get in the back here. And again, nice opening doors. I just did lots of room in these expeditions. So, this one actually has a bucket third row. I don't have captain's chairs in XLT. And looking at this, I do have some controls as far as heating and cooling, but I don't have any, doesn't look like I have any setup for, yeah, no, no cooled or heated seats. I do have some plugs and uh, that's it. So definitely, I definitely don't have all the luxury features you have. Uh, Painter Moonroof got that, but I don't have the seats and I don't have any sort of Back here, I have very minimal adjustments. I have just the hand controller, no heat and cooled, and um, yeah, a whole lot of nada. All right, now it's time for the really good stuff on the Lincoln Navigator, and that is pretty much everything on the interior in terms of technology, appointments, and fit and finish. And you know what? We're just gonna start with powering up this vehicle. Because, yep, in case you missed it, those chimes are actually the Detroit Symphony Orchestra. I think that is really cool, and it's a nice relief from the meh, meh, meh sounds that you hear in other vehicles. So, okay, just doing a quick sweep here, you see that you have a full digital display behind the cluster. You have this really large horizontal screen with some digital controls, but you also have your heart controls for your volume, tuning, and your HVAC. That gets a huge thumbs up in my book. And I will also point out you have this piano key push button gearing. So you don't have a dial shifter, gear shifter, column shifter, it's all push button right here. Now, one of the downsides of all this is going to be the black lacquer, which will leave itself open to fingerprints, but in general, I think this looks really good. Now, the other thing, we talked about this with the seat comfort, but you've got your perfect position seats with your adjustments here. You've got your massaging seat function and then your seat adjustments, you press this button and uh, this screen pops up over here and you can adjust the comfort of your seats. Coming back over here, I would like to point out one of my favorite all-time features is adjustable pedals. Okay, thankfully inside the cabin, let's go ahead and start her up. And get those cool seats working. 
Temperature working. I do have a piece of plastic over top of this. Sorry, this is a dealer version. I'm not gonna take the plastic off. Uh, so I have the controls here, drive modes, similar type of um, design. You can see just a cheaper version of that. And let's turn the fans down. But I have the trailer controls there. I have that there and the controls over here. Okay, fairly similar setup going on there as well with the adjustable pedals and the, um, you can have the seats back there too and open up the rear as well. So overall, a very similar interior. You also have what they call active glide capability, which in Ford vehicles is blue cruise, but basically you press this button here. And in addition to adaptive cruise control, speed modulation, um, and lane keep assist, you can actually take your hands off the wheel and you'll get a blue steering wheel back here that says hands-free. Actually, it looks exactly like blue cruise in Ford vehicles. I don't know if you can see it, but there's also a head-up display that is really colorful and gives you a lot of data, including your navigation functionality, your speed sign reader, and your uh, temperature, your time, your speed itself, and how long you have to go until you're at empty. Then again, you've got this over here with your buttons over here. You've got a uh, wireless Apple CarPlay, and I will point out, you do have wireless charging in here, but this is actually one of the things that I don't like about the Lincoln Navigator because this helps your phone overheat really fast. So I could never actually use the wireless charger, which is why I had my um, actual plug in here so I could plug in my phone to charge. So my phone wouldn't overheat while I was using the wireless Apple CarPlay. Now, another feature I really like on the Lincoln Navigator is going to be this. You have a bit of a floating console, which means that you can fit a small purse and some other items under here for storage. And I really like the ability to be able to put your purse here rather than putting it on the seat because frankly, I just don't think that's safe because if you stop fast, the purse is gonna fly and yeah, somebody could break in your window and steal it. I don't know. I just don't like putting my purse on the passenger seat. So this right here is a much better option. Now, one of the things that she talked about that I don't have is I don't have any pass through. I don't have any way to get anything through here. So I don't have a pass through like she said with her purse and such. I have a wireless charger on top and I have the gear selector and such, but I have no way to have any additional storage there. And like I said, on these seats, not really much adjustability. Now, the other thing that I will point out on the Lincoln vehicles is that you have some really nice materials and fit and finish. I, I don't know if you can see this, but there's an, an interesting geometric pattern into the wood grain and it carries through all the way to the other side over here. You've got some nice wood here and this is a nice, like you, you push this and it's a very solid feeling. Um, piece because a lot of times this piece doesn't feel solid it feels kind of plasticky and cheap but this feels good and I really like the actual you know physical button push rather than a lot of them will have you just like press here to to get it open but you've got a nice very pleasing tactile feel to the button push the Seating materials are comfortable and very plush. I mean, come on, look at those seats. There is nothing about that that is not going to be super ultra comfortable. And in terms of the sound system, you have a Revel uploadable premium 3D sound system with 28 speakers. And again, not an audiophile here, but to my untrained ears, I think it sounds pretty good. Now, two other things that I want to showcase on this vehicle that I think are nice little finishing touches. First off, as you hit these little control buttons here, do you see the little sparkly bits that show up around the menu items? I think that's just a nice little finishing touch. And you can also see it in the behind the wheel cluster <laughs> right here. You've got the sparkly bits there. And as your uh, speed goes up and the needle moves on the dial, the little sparkly bits follow. So I, I don't know. I just think that's a nice little finishing touch. And yeah, I like that. Now, the other thing this vehicle has is ambient lighting. And you don't have a lot of different colors to choose from, but you can get a little bit choosy and select some different colors in terms of the ambient lighting. To finish the ambient lighting conversation, I moved into my garage because you can get a better idea of where the ambient lighting actually shows up. 
And what I like about the ambient lighting in the Lincoln Navigator is that it's not overwhelming and it doesn't kind of go in your face. You look at a lot of luxury vehicles, Mercedes is kind of famous for it at this point, where you get the ambient lighting that's on the dash and it's on the door and it's on the, you know, cup holder well and it's on the floating console area and to me that is just a little bit aggressive and a little bit much and it's not very luxury. Um, so I like the fact that you have your colors up here and it just kind of subtly changes depending on what you want. So I'm going to say that to me is also really luxe level in terms of ambient lighting. All right, let's go for a drive and oh, before I go for any further, I should say I don't have Blue Cruise in here. I don't have the Lincoln Super Glide, whatever they call that thing. So I don't have that. I don't have the console that closes so nicely. I don't have its massaging seats. I do have adjustable pedals. So that's pretty cool. I have the adaptive cruise control and I don't have anything for ambient lighting. I can change the back screen here to be well, white or black, but I got nothing else for you there. So I don't have nearly the features that she's got in that vehicle. So I want to talk a little bit about ride quality because I think that the ride quality on the Lincoln is far superior to pretty much anything that I have driven recently. And a lot of that has to do with the interior quietness. So I live in Chicago and our city streets are typically noisy and busy and um, there's just a lot of activity. People are playing music and there's a lot of stuff that goes on. But I just get this sense of every time that I get into this vehicle and I shut the door, it's just like I'm enveloped in quiet, calm and peace. And it's one of those feelings that I don't get in a lot of vehicles. The, the door shutting is a solid thwap and then it's just enveloping quietness. And I really appreciate that. And one of the ways that Lincoln achieves this, okay, there's a lot of sound deadening material between obviously the engine and the cabin, but there is also acoustic glass. So we've talked about acoustic glass before on the um, Toyota Tundra and we've done sound tests um, and it really does make a big difference in how the sound levels for the vehicles are. So here we are, we've got acoustic glass not only on the front windshield, but also on the first and second row glass panes. So on your windows, pretty much surrounding the first and second rows, you have acoustic glass and that really helps with this sense of calm, peaceful quietness. Now, the next part I want to talk about in terms of ride quality is going to be how it handles things like speed bumps. So we're in front of a school right now and there are a lot of speed bumps. Now, obviously I can't go over this going 25 miles an hour, but I just feel like the vehicle just kind of goes over the speed bump in a very calm and collected manner. I don't feel like I'm like clattering my teeth. It's not very jarring. It's just a nice little boop, boop, up and over. And I felt the same thing with all of the potholes we have in Chicago, the different um, road surfaces and things like that. And just overall, from the quietness to how the suspension handles the different road surfaces, everything about this ride quality is, in my book, far superior. Now, let's send it back to Tim to see what he's thinking about the ride quality on the Expedition. So, I mean, offline, this thing is really quick for a full-size SUV. I'm already at 55, and I was barely even gassing it. So, uh, turbos, 55 miles an hour, very smooth. Now, I'm hitting some road vibrations and the camera's shaking a little bit, so I'm hoping the GoPro technology is good enough to make sure the shake doesn't show up, but um, I can feel these bumps pretty decent. Um, so the suspension isn't nearly as good in the Expedition as it is in the Lincoln Navigator. So that's kind of my thoughts on driving. Um, I haven't really gone that far, but this road is bad and this vehicle is not handling it well. So boy, my camera is all over the place in this vehicle and I can hear quite a bit of road noise outside the window. It almost feels like the window needs to be rolled up. So uh, I don't have acoustic glass either. So, all right. Well, the engine and the exterior may not be a wow factor for the Lincoln Navigator in terms of the whole $25,000 premium thing. I think that once you get inside the vehicle, 
you can see where the money is really at play. So the acoustic glass, the overall quietness of the interior is a big deal. Also, the interior materials, the massaging seats, these perfect position seats, which hug even somebody who weighs 95 pounds, that is also a really big deal. The technology, the materials, the fit and finish. Is this worth $25,000? For me, it is. We're gonna go back to Tim and we're gonna see if he thinks that this vehicle is worth $25,000 more than the Ford Expedition. Okay, now the most important question, is it worth the money? I think it might be. I mean, those additional seats, the seating functions, the lumbar, the more comforts, the, the second row comforts as far as that goes, the acoustic glass, the better suspension, just the overall ride quality, and I, I really like the Lincoln Navigator looks a little bit more in the Ford Expedition, to be honest with you. So. Um, it's one of those rare cases that I usually want to go with the lower price vehicle just because vehicles are too expensive anyways. But when we looked up on online and we looked at it, it's like $25,000 difference between the MSRPs. Yeah, I was like, man, that's a lot of money. But then looking at her videos, looking at my videos, I got to say, it just might be worth the extra coin. That is, if you have that many coins in your pocket. <laughs> okay, there you go. There are the differences between the Lincoln Navigator and the Ford Expedition. 50,000 smackers is the difference there, which is really, um, was eye-opening. We kind of talked a little bit offline and we're like, holy cow, 50 grand, we, we might make sure we update this video. So you guys think, put your comments down below, is it worth $50,000 more to you to get those additional benefits of Lincoln Navigator? When I initially recorded this, it was 25,000. I thought, yeah, it's kind of worth 25,000, but 50? Whoa, hold the phone. Wow, did that really change my opinion? I'm not so certain it's worth the difference, but you know what? If you're shopping for the most luxury SUV, maybe it is worth to you, maybe it's not, I don't know. Again, that's what we're asking you, the audience. Read comments down below, also check out these videos over here. Make sure you check us out on pickuptrucktalk.com. As always, thanks for watching. I will see you down the road.